Previously on the Popple People, Big L dropped me off at the airport with a one-way ticket to Phoenix and a suitcase full of tools. I'm picking up a 1998 Dodge 4x4 truck that we bought sight unseen and I'm going to attempt to drive it back to Aspen Ridge about halfway across the country, about 1800 miles. Let's work on it. There's Drew, he just got through grease in the front end. Getting it ready for the road home. Got all the tools back here. Cooler for sandwiches. A few extra parts. We got extra gas in the back. Right here, extra coolant and water. Water for me. Spare, check that. Check the tires. Check the lug nuts, make sure they were torqued. Check all the fluid levels. Just change oil on it. She's all ready to go.
What is this, Tonto? It's Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake and Tonto National Forest. We're headed to Tortilla Flat, Arizona, where we're going to eat at the Superstition Saloon. Uh, I had a cowboy quesadilla there, which was a recommendation to Drew. It was the most awesome thing I've ever had. Very delicious. Now, the dollars you see on the walls here are, um, the reason they have those there is because uh, miners used to pin those up, and then they, after their shift, would come back and they would take it down so they could buy their drinks. Next, we stop at the Goldfield Ghost Town, which is a neat place to see. Had a lot of old equipment there that they used to use uh, gold mining. And uh, there's actually, a, I believe, underground mine as well, but um, they're doing some open pit mining still there currently. But it's uh, pretty cool. It's got a lot of the old buildings. There's some old church in there, and there's a old uh, jail as you can see, and uh, it was just really neat. It's a, it's pretty much a touristy place, but it was kind of neat. There's a bar there with all these boots in the ceiling, and uh, I actually found a picture of Willie Nelson there, and uh, he uh, was there with the owner of the bar, who was actually behind the bar that day. Just leaving Arizona, heading through the mountains. so good she's running pretty good heading to Grants New Mexico my first gas stop this is the old route 66 here's Albuquerque New Mexico I didn't stop but boy is it a big city here I'm crossing the Texas border uh, pretty neat in the panhandle and I had to get video of this train it seemed like it was like 10 miles long it just went forever it seemed like Traveling I, I believe, 81 north towards uh, Nebraska and uh, got a couple hours in today driving from Liberal, Kansas. Everything's going well. Beautiful day today. Uh, so far, no problems. Knock on wood. So I uh, just made it to Des Moines, Iowa, the Motel 6 here. And uh, I think it was about 584 miles from Liberal, Kansas. Not quite as long of a drive today. Uh, I feel pretty good, um, not too tired, but I figured I'd better stay in the night. And I think tomorrow is about six hours. But anyways, uh, there's the beast. I'm just going to get some luggage out here and get something to eat and uh, take it easy and rest. I just took a shower and got something to eat. Um, <clears throat> thought I'd do a little recap on what's been going on. Um, driven 1,370 miles so far, uh, approximately 21 hours of driving between Thursday, which was 12 hours, and today, was, which was nine. <clears throat> Today I left in Liberal, Kansas at about 6.30 and drove to Des Moines, Iowa. <clears throat> I took uh, routes up through Kansas. Um, I believe it's Highway 50, 56, and then I took Highway 81 up and hit I-80 and went east on I-80. Um, that pretty much took me all the way to Des Moines, where I am today. So looking forward to tomorrow. I should be able to get home tomorrow. Um, only about... Uh, 400 mile stretch so that should be just a picnic now compared to what I've been doing <clears throat> can't say I'd ever do this again because it is a long drive from Arizona um, but I think it'll be well worth it uh, once I get home and uh, I have a nice rust-free Arizona truck so um, didn't have any trouble so far knock on wood um, truck's been running great um, very surprising that uh, buying a truck sight unseen, I guess, it wasn't quite sight unseen. I, I guess I did see it through Facebook when I looked at it, face, uh, FaceTime. Um, but <clears throat> it's always a gamble and uh, you're always wondering if something's going to break with something with 200,000 miles plus on it. So 
Uh, so far I've had good luck and I hope it continues tomorrow when I get home. So uh, that's that and uh, wish me luck, thanks. Just leaving Des Moines, Iowa, heading north. Uh, it's another beautiful day on the road. Looks like the traffic's pretty light. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, looking forward to being home. So about uh, 45 minutes to get home here. I'm um, just driving through the woods, getting to uh, Aspen Ridge. Uh, good to be back in, uh, in the woods here. Excited. How was the trip? How are you feeling? Well, let's see the truck. Oh, a hard boiled egg. Yum. Yum. Daddy brought you treats, eggs all the way from Arizona. There you go. Careful. All right. Oh, it's good to be home. How'd the truck run? The truck ran perfect. Awesome. Only, Any hiccups along the way? I only had one issue. What was that? When I was leaving Arizona, careful, honey. When I was leaving Arizona in the mountains, I had it on high beams and the lights went out and I quick put them on low beams and then the lights worked okay. So uh, it's got some fancy halogen uh, light bulbs in there. So there could be a issue with that on the high beams and maybe it's drawing too much current I don't know but I was just glad to have regular headlights um, so. how'd it ride uh like a four-wheel drive truck um there's 40 psi in the tires so I could conserve on gas mileage so uh yeah at any point along the way did you question your sanity for doing uh, this every, trip every mile every mile away <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, how many total miles and how many states did you drive uh, through 1,800 miles approximately in about seven states. Last question. <laughs> Would you do it again? Buy a vehicle uh, sight unseen and drive it back halfway across the country? Maybe ask me in another couple of years. <laughs> um, <laughs> the biggest thing with driving is you have to, uh, it's not just driving, you have to be mentally prepared. Um, I didn't realize um, how much went into driving. It's because the interstates down south are just loaded with semis. You can't get around them. I mean, it's it's just crazy. Um, and once you get up north, the traffic starts getting a little bit lighter and lighter. But I did plan some routes around the interstate, especially in Kansas. I went through uh, state highways and county highways just to avoid uh, driving through Wichita and Kansas City. Apparently, what about like the turnpike and all of those toll no, roads? No, I, I avoided all of that. Um, a lot of times um, it's easier on your brain i guess mentally to get off the beaten path because those interstates if you're constantly on those with the semi traffic it's just you better know how to drive let me tell you because if you're not staying in the right lane and passing to the left you're going to get run over and uh, you need to know how to drive on the interstate all right so the biggest thing with driving is um solo 1800 miles if you've ever done it yourself you know what i'm talking about you just get mentally exhausted physically exhausted uh it's pretty emotional coming home actually uh, it seems like a dream I, I can't even believe i'm home right now and you made it just in time for thanksgiving yes uh, i was kind of worried about that um, truck had pretty good gas mileage especially down south once i started getting north and the temperature started coming down uh there's generally more oxygen molecules per square foot uh in the air so you use more fuel when it's cold out so what'd you spend in gas whole trip i have no idea probably between three and four hundred dollars and it was did you have an exact mileage or 1800 ish uh it's about 1800 i went um i can uh update you on the the cost i had once i sit down and put the numbers together and 
couple of miles. Let's so. take a look at this beast. She's, little, she's a little rough on the paint. It's little better. paint delamination, uh, but expected. <laughs> is that a bullet hole? That could be not nice. Here's <laughs> the back of the pickup truck. It's pretty nice because it's got a bed liner. Oh, you don't you don't need to jump up, sweetheart. The bed liner, and I did use the two cans of fuel I put in. Uh, at each hotel stop, I put five gallons into the truck, so I had a total of ten gallons for emergency fuel. I had uh, almost a gallon of, of mixed coolant, and I had two of these full of water. And then, of course, don't forget when you're traveling, always bring drinking water. It's the best thing to drink. Um, you don't want to drink a lot, obviously, because then you're going to have to stop and go to the bathroom, which I just totally hydrated a little bit at a time, and I, the only times I had to go to the bathroom were my gas stops, so... Um, what was the cheapest gas you found? Cheapest gas was two thirty nine a gallon. That was a dollar off um, at a Chevron station because I loaded their app. And the first three Phillips, you get a dollar off, so it's well worth it. If you pre-plan some of this stuff, um, you can save a ton of money, uh, especially your hotels. I spent maybe $105 with tax for both hotels, and both of them were pretty nice. They were clean. They were quiet. Um, don't try to drive more than 12 hours. <laughs> the first day I drove 12 hours, the second day I drove nine hours, and this day I drove six. So it was three hour drop, which was really nice because today was just kind of a pleasant drive uh, coming up from Des Moines, Iowa. Um, Why did you stay in hotels? I mean, you've got a topper, you could have stayed in the back. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend staying um, anywhere. Maybe a campground would be safe to stay at, but if I wouldn't suggest staying at a rest stop. That would be uh, pretty sketchy in my opinion. I, ra I would rather spend the, the $100 on a hotel room where I feel safe. And not um, take your life in your you know, hands. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real important to get a nice hot shower and a good hot meal at the end of the day and then kind of unwind and get a good night's sleep so you're ready to drive the next day, especially when you're driving these long incremental periods. The first, uh, the first uh, day it was about 800 miles if not quite 800 the second day it was about almost 600 and today was about 400 so somewhere in there well uh, someone's happy I, i'm super tired right now my brain is mush um, if you've ever driven this you know what i'm talking about uh, i'm just glad to be home i just want to unload and not think about driving for a couple days at least i uh picked up some uh potatoes for thanksgiving on the way i couldn't pass it up there 99 cents Nice. Um, one thing I was going to say um, is you really have to, not only is it the drive, but it's, the, it's watching the weather forecast. Not just for where you are at, but where you're going to travel, obviously, the, the next day. Um, which I was really fortunate to have three days of really nice weather. I didn't have one drop of rain except which is ironic, leaving Arizona, it rained the morning I left and then there was a few sprinkles in the mountains. And that was the first rain they had in like five, six months. So it was kind of crazy that it rained while I was there, but um, that was it. Um, I was real fortunate to have three, three days of good weather, which I could have had a snow blizzard, I could have had torrential rain, it could have been anything. And, uh, well, so this time of year, you could have easily come home to a blizzard. Correct. So. I was lucky there and uh, everything worked out well. It's just uh, I'm real super tired now and I don't want to drive anymore for a while. Who's your little good luck charm? Oh. You want to introduce? Yeah, this is kind of like if anyone's ever seen the movie Castaway uh, with Tom Hanks, if you remember Wilson, he drew a face on a volleyball and put hair on it and stuff and talk to it all the time well <laughs> this, I had is, lot of, this is who you talk to since, on your trip <laughs> yeah since i didn't have anybody to talk to th this guy uh, I'll, I'll get him first here this guy here <laughs> coco pele uh we got on a trip to utah we went on and, like a long time ago nine years ago we were having vehicle trouble uh we had a truck and we had our fifth wheel camper but we were having some trouble with the truck and once we hung this on the rear view mirror we didn't have any trouble at all and this is kind of our good luck charm so Coco Pele came with me to Arizona on the plane and all the way back to uh, Aspen Ridge here so 
Um, he's going to stay here in this truck because he's a good luck charm and um, totally a uh, believer. So, I mean, this truck has 230,000 miles on it and, um, you know, you're driving it and anything can break at any time. A uh, fuel pump could go, you could have a distributor go, you could have a water pump leak. Um, there's just a gamut of things that could go wrong. Um, and <clears throat> what I did is I checked all the fluids in the differentials and the transfer case, changed oil, uh, transmission looks really good, the fluid. Um, went through and greased the whole front end, checked for any loose parts. Uh, those are some key things that you need to do when you're buying a vehicle this old and traveling this far. Um, you know, there's still a possibility of something breaking, but uh, it didn't hear, so knock on wood, I guess. Um, I got real super lucky, so. All right, well, the popple pickup is home. The pink popple pickup. Notice that the paint is faded from the Arizona sun, so Drew kind of said this was the, the pink truck, so he's teasing me, <laughs> so now it's the pink popple truck, I guess you could say. The, pink the, popple pickup. The pink, pink popple pickup plow truck. There we go. Say that 10 times fast. Yes, no thanks. I could barely say it right now. So I packed this on Thursday morning at like 4.30 in the morning. And look at how much ice is still in here. Yeah, that's pretty uh, impressive so for a cheap cooler. It's a cheap cooler from Walmart. It's uh, an Ozark Trail 30 quart cooler. I think I paid like less than 20 bucks for this thing. Look at how much freaking ice there was left. That's pretty impressive after three days, two and a half days, three days, whatever it is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. We'd sure appreciate it. Stay tuned for our next video. We've got some things to do on the truck, including mounting the snowplow.